my assignment will be on the history of arcade machines and what they brought to the game industry this day because it's factual information and I also personally very believe that without arcade machines and without the arcade industry and developers and companies actually putting money and investment and time into the arcade industry we would not have the modern game the modern day gaming industry that we have today with the Xbox PS4 the Destiny Fallout without all that I believe we would not have well, the arcade machines, we would not have the game market as it is, and as it bit as it is a government gi giant as it is today. The beginning of the game history begins, in my opinion, with the game Pong. It was the first ever commercial available platform to the public, as arcade machines could be accessed at any time at a small cost of from anywhere from ten p to fifty p. And it was not you, you did not require it to, be, to buy your own console, to buy a separate game, to buy add-ons for it. It was a arcade, arc, an arcade, or even even most fatty restaurants at the time owned Pong, because the fact about it, Pong actually brought more business than than actually the restaurant itself. Because Pong was such a hit during the time that everyone just flocked to the game and and thought it was amazing. And because at, at the time before Pong, there was, there had been nothing like that. Uh, the first game machine was developed by the MIT, and it was literally a blip on screen, and it cost around a grand, and in today's inflation, about ten grand to own. So it was not available for commercial. But Pong, created by Atari, Atari company, was one of the first commercially available game game arcade machines out there, and it was introduced to all arcades, and it was introduced to many restaurants as before. Was the game was so popular, there used to be lines around the corner to play the game. The founders of our industry, Atari, released the game, released the game Pong in 1971. Pong was just a game where a virtual game of tennis, where two players would, would play two white lines going up and down the screen to bounce a ball back and forth. And as in tennis, the first ball to score on their court would gain a point. This was a huge advancement in, in 1971. Because before Pong, there were no other games, but the technology within Pong was massive, as they had to use such large technology to actually run the game. Because at the time, there were no microchip, no microprocessors. Most things that were only available to military or government personnel. So to actually create this commercially available machine was actually is amazing, as it would have took so much effort and so much time just to think what to put in it and how to do it. So the, the the Atari creators, in my in my opinion, are geniuses. Pong used a basic two dimensional graphics. Two players were a, virt a virtual game, and that's it. Two players would, would stand next to each other, turn in a little, little twisty dial, and the bats would move up and down the screen to bounce the ball back and forth. But Pong is only the first game. There are many more games to come during this gaming out the gaming industry burst. The first, after Pong, other companies realised the potential in this market, and the companies decided, if you know, it's a new and upcoming market, they saw how players, adults, children, all, everyone, at any age, just flock to the screen, just to pay 50p to have a bit, bit of, just have a minute of fun, but it was worth it to them. So, the history begins with Pong, but many more arcade, arcade machines did come, because in 1978, Tato released the game Space Invaders. Space Invaders was a game where you played a missile defense against aliens, and you shoot little, little aliens out of the sky. The game was so basic as the alien just moved back and forth on the screen. It was nothing more than that. That's what, at our time, that, 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 that was just a big hit. After Space Invaders came Asteroids. In 1979, where you played we play a spaceship shoot me rights. Even this game was basic, as as in the time, the t -t technology didn't advance much in four years since Pong. So all the all, all it was was white lines shooting uh, meteorites. After asteroids came Glatzgun in 1979 with Namco. Way that then, then then Berserk in 1980, Defender 1980 once again. As the game market at this time was booming every single day, more and more players came and came, and and companies realized this investment and realized it was a booming market. So each year 
more and more and more and more games released because at, at, at Pong, Pong was there at the, third, at the start. But Atari still wanted to control the market. So they released very popular games such as Missile Command and Nintendo Speed. But, more, but the most iconic two games, I believe, was once again released by the company Namco, what is still big to this day. Namco released Pac Man in 1980, and saying the name Pac Man is instantly recognisable with that it's little yellow man bouncing across the screen, eating pellets, being chased by four ghosts. It was amazing at that time, using two directional colours, and the advancements were so great. Pac Man to this day is still a notable game. And then Nintendo, a, Jap a Japanese company. Originally invested in play, uh, it was originally a playing card company. Actually decided that this market would be great in Japan, as as after the war, a lot of Japanese people decided to adapt to Western cultures. So they believed that re releasing a game called Donkey Kong, and it was true, Donkey Kong was a commercial hit across Japan, America, everywhere. It spread like wildfire. Everyone loved Donkey Kong, and that's what matters about it. Um, after Donkey Kong, now I'm going to do the limitations and features of an arcade machine. The limitations and features of the features of an arcade machine is that it was coin operated. It had the buttons and joystick controls. Um, it offered co-op support, so two players at a time could play the game together. Uh, but um, and it was an advancement since in the seventies. It was nothing like it before that. And it offered a range of different games, from shooting games to uh, to, to be a space man for all you want. Uh, limitations, uh, uh, games in modern day, we we have modern games such as Guitar Hero, uh, racing games, bike games. Modern day games offer no online support. Uh, they they're very large and hardware dependent. Uh, compared to modern consoles like PS4, where it's just a little console with, with um, a GPU and that, but a arcade machine still requires a large amount. Like the components need to be large inside it, which is cost, which is a it was an expe a large expense. So to be to own own an arcade, you would have to invest a great amount of money. Uh, it was one game per sh it's one game per machine. So with one game per machine, you don't you, that's. You, you can't have one game in an arcade, so you would have to invest into multiple arcade ar ar arcade machines. But nowadays, they do offer some arcade machines were built in multiple games. But back in nineteen seventies and from nineteen eighty nine, with all the whistle games, it was still one uh, one game per machine. And arcades are rarely used anymore. In today, they have become so relevant as the last time people use arcade. People have just flocked to the Xbox now. You can provide home entertainment in your house. Xbox and PS4s are now taking on an arcade machine. An arcade machine is rarely used now. And this this is the arcade. Now to the history of the actual gaming consoles. Gaming consoles, everyone knows one now. Uh, gaming consoles have become so expansive and the cost of it is so cheap that you can buy one for merely 80 quid now. And an Xbox 360 can go for 80 quid. That's why you will find now the modern day game machine in every household uh, house home across the UK, probably across the world. And as game actually consoles now offer online support, you can instantly connect and play games with from someone from China, someone from America. This is what offers. This is what game machine. This is what a game machine offers to the world. A game machine is probably the greatest advancement, apart from your game machine, what actually started the game industry. But a game console was the, probably the greatest advancement in the game, game industry because not only did a game console allow you to play games in your home, you didn't have to travel to an arcade or pay, well, even to own your, own your arcade machine. You didn't, have to, you didn't have to pay, like, say, well, back then, about, well, like, put inflation, about five grand. Game machines actually allow people to play in their own house with parents, families, as a pastime. This was a great advancement. The history of the game machine begins with the first ever home console, and this was the Magnavox Odyssey. Back then, it costs around, I believe, around 
three grand. Um, the pen probably bought it from Patagon, but I wasn't allowed. I wasn't allowed in that. I wasn't allowed in It was released one year after the first arcade machine, because the develop the the, the, the company uh, Magnavox realized that the arcade was a massive hit. Pong, the Pong arcade game was a massive hit, but the hardware was massive. Like to, to actually build and run an arcade machine, you need massive components. So Magnavox realized that people were flocking to this, but had to go out the homes and go like, had to go out in public and got actually, actually travel to arcade machines, arcade machines somewhere else. And they realized that what if they brought the machines to the house? So this brought in the Magnavox Odyssey, which in its lifetime sold 330,000 units. The first game to release with the Magnavox Odyssey was Pong, because Pong was, of course, from Atari, and they realised that if they they thought they could make a twist on it, as Magnavox offered little little displays you could put you can put you could put on your screen that like could make it look like hockey, make it look like basketball. But it's still a little white ball, but with a little display screen. After, after the Magnavox, in nineteen seventy-seven, Atari released released their first video game console called the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Once again, Atari Twenty Six Hundred was a game was a machine that brought an amazing amount of games and once again boosted the game industry. And let, let let people play whatever they wanted. Such games as Chuck E. Cheese, Space Invaders, or back then Space Wars, as as some console countries could be could be played on the Atari Six Hundred. After Atari Six Hundred, uh, well, a couple of years on, as more and more video games released, once again Nintendo, the company I talked about before, decided to put their foot in the market and release the core TV game. Uh, or, which once again offered Pong, so because because um, Nintendo realised that Pong was a global hit, and they thought they released it on uh, their own Nintendo uh, game, but Nintendo start Nintendo to this day is one of the biggest industries in gaming, and started off as one of the smallest ones, as because as because Nintendo, after re- after making commercial success on their own game machine, released it, the Namco. The Namco was a home family game machine that provided two-dimensional graphics, and you could play from games such as Mario. Well, the bad name was called um, Donkey Kong, but uh, you could play uh, Donkey Kong, Galaga, Cubert, um, and uh, uh, different Mario games really. And but after Nintendo made so much money. Off the Famicom, they realised that they could bring it to the States, and in the States, they released the Nintendo Home Entertainment System, or the NES. And once again, the NES was just a Famicom, but with the US sprinkle of touch on it. And once again, you could play Mario on it, you could play Space Invaders on it, you could play anything on it. It was a price, it was a pricey box, but it was a good price to pay to pay to play home games in your own house. To this day, we. More, more, and more advancements came as Nintendo released more. Nintendo released more consoles. They released the N sixty four. There was the Game Boy. They released the PS. Uh, there was the Wii. They released a Wii U now. And as we come to the modern world, but one of the greatest, uh, in one of the greatest industry companies to actually influence the industry was Sony, as originally Sony were paired with Nintendo, and. This, the PlayStation was originally meant to be an attachment to Ninten- Nintendo Home Nintendo 64. But as the two companies broke off, Sony released in 1994 its first game console, the PS1. The PS1 was an instant hit as it brought three dimensional graphics. You could play uh, Killer Instinct, uh, Ultra Fighter, Earthworm Jim. These games were an ambassador advancement on the PS4. And PS One, the PS One, after time advanced to the PS Two, where you released San Andreas, which, and then the graphics got better as hardware became more advanced. Graphics got better. PS Three, and now in the eighth generation of consoles, we have the PS Four, Xbox One, which which now utilizes ten H 
1080p graphics, 60fps frame rate. As back in 1970, the NASA's first ever launch to the moon required required less technology than X1 has has in it today. This is the history of the um, X, of the of the consoles. The features and limitations of the console is that a, f a feature of it is that it, it can be played in a how it can play in your own house. You can bring it home and actually not require money to play it. It also you also got joy pads with it. Joy pads, which you can play games. Uh, it offered comfortable support. It was just a really good idea, joy pads, because just uh, originally we had the um, the game stick uh, joy pad. Watch it was just a stick, but it was really limited on what you could do with it. You could literally move and shoot. But joypads offer the off offer the thing offer full movement, shooting, reloading, everything. Uh, games also a feature of um of the console. Games could be released with the console. You could buy games such as Red Dead, GTA, and you could play at home. But games do cost a large amount of money. Uh, and limitations of the console. Is it requires a constant power support? Uh, you need power. You can't. It's not handheld. You do need a power support to play. Uh, get it does cost a lot of money. It is around four hundred quid when it first came out, and games are around six quid each. So it is a massive investment. And overall, it's just a great a great investment in the game industry. And today, over four billion people play video games. That is because. It came such a big industry and now it has influenced the world to play it. Thank you.